And welcome back to another edition of the Twins Wrap with Dick Bramer, the television voice of the Minnesota Twins, Derek Hansen with you. And you and I were just talking off the air, Dick. It's hard to believe we're looking at Labor Day weekend already. Well, the summers always seem to fly by, but I think we've all been reminded it flies by a little quick, uh, quicker when you've got a winning baseball team to talk about. I can't believe that you know we're almost into September and the regular season has, what, 32 games left for the Twins, so it's gone by in a blink. It sure has. I'm sure that's interesting you say that because I'm you've watched the Twins when there have been some struggling years. I think you look back to a couple of years ago, all time, you know, lowest win total ever. That can make for a long summer for you, I'm sure, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, it, it's not as fun as when the team is uh, winning uh, like they have this year. They're on a pace to finish with what 97 wins, something like that this year. Uh, but the season, and I know some people have a hard time believing this. It might be a long season for them, but it really isn't for me because I still enjoy, even in uh, the worst of seasons, going to the ballpark and and uh, you know every game is a new game and and uh, it's obviously more fun when the team you're covering wins, but you really don't know from one night to the next what you're going to see at the ballpark. So, uh, good season, bad season. I'm always still saddened when the season comes to an end. You know, it's funny you say that every game is a new game. Heck, lately this year, it seems like every inning is a new inning. I was about ready to write this team off Saturday. They come back, and well, it was a huge for them to win that series. If they had lost series at homes against the White Sox and then Detroit, if they didn't get that come-from-behind victory and then winning on Sunday, that would really have, you know, psyche-wise, I think that would have been a tough. Yeah, and then, of course, uh, you, you have to step back and take uh, the longer view of things, and it was – uh, on the one hand, a disappointing homestand, just three and three, but uh, the team started the homestand with a two and a half game lead, and uh, at the end of the uh, homestand, the Twins had a three and a half game lead. So, you know, the wins and losses uh, certainly are important. That gets you to where you want to be. But the biggest number now is the lead, and if the Twins can maintain it, and then have that big series when we get back home from this road trip against Cleveland, should set things up uh, for a really, really fun weekend. Should there be concern? Obviously, you want an ace to step up, and Odorizzi was kind of been the the guy. Michael Pineda has been pitching very well, and I think he goes tonight. But uh, the you know Jose Barrios, they're thinking that he's going to be the guy, and it's been a little rocky for him as late as of late. Yeah, that's the one advantage that uh, the Indians have over the Twins. They have gotten in the second half of the year much better starting pitching than the Twins have had, and that can change as we've all seen. The guys who were in the rotation earlier this year were all really, really good. Uh, They're healthy. There are no health issues to be concerned about. So the hope is Barrios can fight through what has been kind of a disappointing second half for him and pitch the way he did in the first half. And it would be nice if the Twins are good enough and uh, fortunate enough to get into the playoffs uh, if he would pitch like the, the A.C. is perceived to be. It is refreshing to see Martin Perez, whatever was going on with him, seems to be better anyway, right? Yeah, and then therein lies the hope for the other guys as well. Uh, He fought through a tough stretch. There were some rumblings that maybe he would uh, be relegated to the bullpen. That's how bad things were for him. And they just uh, reasoned things out uh, with him. Uh, Was told, uh, look, don't save anything uh, in the tank. Just go out and let it fly early on. And ever since then, he's had you know, three really good starts. So, you know, I think the, the the message given to Perez has probably been given to Barrios as well. And uh, we'll see what happens when he uh, takes his turn next time through the rotation. Yeah, speaking of guys who needed to uh, snap out of slumps, it was nice to see C.J. Crone get that home run. Hopefully that's a good thing, uh, you know, a sign of good things to come here for this last month and change of the season. Yeah, C.J., as I think fans know, he's been playing with a sore thumb ever since, well, April, really, and at times it flares up. Sometimes he needs to be given a day off, and he's had probably more off days than he would like. And then, you know, when you're a hitter like he is, you're going to hit a lot of home runs, strike out a lot. You know, the worst thing you can do is have time off and not get that feel in the batter's box that power hitters uh, talk about that they just, you know, they see the ball well, the pitch recognition is good, and and, uh, you know, they, they feel really confident in there. And, and maybe that game will help C.J. build uh, rebuild his confidence a little bit because he was a big, big part of what this Twins team was in the first half of the year. Yeah, as they get the lineup, and, of course, hopefully they it will get Byron Buxton back eventually. But 
you know, when you have uh, Crone doing well and Rosario and uh, Sano and obviously with uh, Nelson Cruz back, it, it is a really fun, a, a big part of the lineup here when you get all those guys together. They're just so dangerous. We've talked about it all summer long, but it's just so much fun to watch that the rotation all the way one through seven or so. Well, I just think now uh, back to the first six, seven weeks of the season and how incredibly uh, potent this Twins lineup was. Uh, and that was without Miguel Sano, who has evolved into the one, one of the more feared sluggers in the league now. So you take what this lineup was through the middle of May, and now you you know find room, of course, for Sano and the power and the discipline that he's brought uh, to his at-bats, and suddenly this lineup looks like it could really be a fun one to watch. We'll have to wait and see how it all plays out here, and they don't have Buxton back yet, but it sure looks like he's uh, going to uh, – join us sometime while we're here in Chicago. And the hope is that he'll be able to stay healthy. And as the twins finish out 2019, the regular season, at least they'll, they'll stay healthy and not suffer the type of injury that the Indians suffered the other day when they lost Jose Ramirez. Boy, that is a big loss, isn't it? I mean, he, he certainly was killing the twins there the few times they face each other and that'll come into play in a couple weeks here when they, not this weekend, but the following weekend when Cleveland comes to town. Yeah, he broke the hamate bone in his hand. And uh, you know, basically, the Indians were a 500 ball club until he you know, found his hitting stroke again. And then he was one of the more, well, he was Jose Ramirez, the guy we'd grown to expect the last couple of years. So he had a terrible first half, and then he discovered something, and the Indians took off. Well, now they're going to have to play at least the next several weeks without him, and his regular season might be finished as well. Really, really tough break for the Indians. I, I hate to, to see that because, as we've discussed a couple times on TV already, uh, I, I look forward to a great race down the stretch with the Indians, and I would love it if both teams were healthy because I think that would make it more riveting to watch. Yeah, I don't disagree with you at all, and it shows you how good – that organization is because you think they don't have their Cy Young award winning pitcher and Corey Kluber and you, know, you just go down the line. They've been fighting through injuries. Uh, Minnesota, they've had their share, but Cleveland is going to say, J- have you seen what we've been through with our IL list? Yeah, they lost Corey Kluber and might have to get through the rest of the year without him now too, but it makes no difference. They've, they've, they've developed Shane Bieber into you know one of the dominant starting pitchers in the league right now and Clevenger's good. They hand the ball to Adam Pletko, and he's been good. Uh, Aaron Savali, no one had heard of him, but he's come up and and given them some good starts. So, yeah, you have to respect what they've done given the injuries they've had to their pitching staff. All right, Dick, we'll focus on tonight's opponent for the Minnesota Twins, the White Sox, in just a bit, and we'll call you right back from the south side of Chicago. Again, this is the Twins Wrap. Derek Hansen with you, along with the television voice of the Minnesota Twins, Dick Bramer. It's brought to you by Jefferson Lines, your number one bus experience for over 100 years, serving North Dakota and cities throughout the Midwest. Jack Sunday will be back to wrap up the Drive Time News Hour here on the Mighty 790 KFGO. And welcome to Couch Potato Radio. Derek Hansen with you on the Mighty 790 KFGO. It's Tuesday, so that means it's time for part two of the Twins Wrap with Dick Bramer, the television voice of the Minnesota Twins, brought to you by Jefferson Lines, your number one bus experience for over 100 years serving North Dakota and cities throughout the Midwest. You mentioned it before, you're exactly right. This is such a fun time of year and the fact that you know, Sunday was the prime example where the Twins are going to, you know, having a victory and they look like they're going to close it up. A few scary moments there in the top of the ninth inning. And then your scoreboard watching. I, you know, I'm watching the game cast as as uh, Kansas City and Cleveland are going back. That is the best part about September baseball, especially if the, t- the top two teams aren't playing each other. Then your scoreboard watching. It takes me back to 2002, 2003 all over again. Well, it, and it's just, it's it's become so much more complicated I think for fans and for broadcasters as well on a nightly basis. Not tonight. We got the White Sox game and I'll be focused of course on what's happening on the field, but I'll have my tablet uh, on Twitter to follow what's happening elsewhere in baseball. And I'll have my phone on the Cleveland game. Uh, so, I mean, I, during inning breaks, I find myself I'm busier now than I am during, you know, uh, play on the field because there's so much to pay attention to what happens tonight in Chicago is really important to Twins fans. But it really is no more important than what's happening in the Cleveland game because it's a two-team race. And if the if the Twins win and the Indians lose, well, that's great. It's, it's wonderful because that means 
the Twins picked up a full game in the standings, but there's so much more to watch now than there was, you know, 10, 15 years ago to pay attention to because there's, you know, so many games uh, of importance uh, to your team. And it's fun. It's it's mind blowing, but it's fun to try to keep track of it all. Unfortunately, Cleveland's playing Detroit again. Boy, the, Ron Garden, I hear in his staff, and you and I know so many of those folks. It's tough to see. I don't know if this is going to be his last draw with that organization. But man, that thing is really falling on its face this year. Only thirty nine wins. Yeah, but I, I think as we tried to discuss uh, on the telecast last weekend, you can see some components of a team that might be able to contend. They've got some good young players now that they didn't really have in the lineup at the start of the year. They got rid of Castellanos. Uh, it's 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 still going to be a long, long road back for them. Uh, they have told us that they've got some talent at the Double A level. Well, that essentially means that's they're at least two years away. So uh, it's a rebuild, and they maybe haven't bottomed out yet. But the hope is, you know, for those of us who admire Ron Garden hire and his staff that uh, they'll get things uh, worked out here pretty soon. You mentioned because you're right, the Tigers have some pesky young kids. You see that with the Royals has some great talent that they just need to put it all together. And I certainly see that in the Chicago White Sox. We saw it you know, last week, obviously, at Target Field. And going up against uh, is it Giolito tonight, too, he, he had the Twins all tied up, a very good offensive team. I mean, the White Sox have some good young players, too. The American League Central, the youth of it anyway, seems pretty healthy. I don't know what's all going to transpire, but, boy, there's some talent there. Well, the White Sox have gotten the best starting pitching in the league in the last three weeks, so this is not going to be an easy series at all for the Twins, and they uh, have to face Lucas Giolito tonight, who pitched probably the best game the Twins have had pitched against them this year, uh, including uh, the starts against Verlander and Cole and people like that. You know, and, that, and there's some truth and some validity to the strength of schedule discussions that have been going on for probably two months now and how the Indians have a tougher schedule down the stretch. But fans would, would really be setting themselves up for disappointment if they uh, assumed that the Twins should sweep the White Sox here or certainly win at least two out of three. It doesn't work that way. You know, it, it's, it's, you, know you, you look at the, the White Sox, who are probably closer to uh, relevance than the, the Tigers and the Royals are right now, but then you go to Detroit, and you have to understand the, the players for Detroit and Kansas City, their season's ending in a few weeks. They know it. They're going to leave everything out on the table and try to you know, leave their footprint in the, in the division race, even though they're not going uh, to the playoffs. So you know, it's, nothing can be taken for granted. You just have to play as best you can and hope you're as healthy as you can be going down the stretch. And that's the thing about these teams out of contention right now and still playing out the last month of the season. And I'm sure you remember this well, talking to some of the uh, Twins players in 2000, they wanted to finish up strong. It wasn't a very good baseball team, but you had the guys like Torrey Hunter who wanted to make a difference and say, hey, we're going to leave our mark and make you remember us for coming into 2001. And they did. Tom Kelly's last year, they contended all the way up until August, in late August. Yeah, they had a good team, and it was a, a, a type of year they probably needed for what was to follow to um, have happened, you know, where they won the division three years in a row uh, to get in into a race and coming up short, as disappointing as that was, uh, they all learned, you know, what it was like to be in that race. Players, incidentally, on that team uh, really uh, will all tell you that the threat of contraction really crystallized that team, that when they took the field opening day 2002, they were out to prove a point, and they certainly did by winning the division the next three years. Let's t- you know the next time we talk next Tuesday, it'll be interesting because it's, it's the day after Labor Day, and that means that they can expand the rosters all the way up to forty in September. I don't know how you feel about that. It's, an, it's a really unique rule to the sport of baseball, but there are some young arms that could maybe come up, and obviously having a third catcher probably, that could help out quite a bit. It should help the Twins. Obviously, it could help out Cleveland and everyone else as well, but that is an interesting part of September for the Twins. Yeah, there's, I would expect, going to be a very a crowded clubhouse uh, from September 1st on when the rosters can be expanded. The Rochester team right now doesn't look like it's going to make the playoffs. The Twins have 39 men on their 40-man roster, and if they showed up with 39 players, uh, you know, the day, uh, the first day they're uh, available to be promoted to the big leagues, 
that would not surprise me at all. It's it's uh, it's going to be uh, both interesting and laborious to watch because all the teams will have that you know the the you know fourteen relief pitchers or whatever, and so you'll have matchup pitching changes and all that going forward. But uh, um, at least there's something to play for this year for the Twins. We'll expect to see. Thorpe and Smeltzer, maybe Gratterall and some of the other pitchers that have gone back and forth, they'll all be here uh, for good now and uh, uh, hoping to pitch some big innings and get some big at-bats down the stretch. And it's always good for these guys to come up. I, I really like this September call-up. It's 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 funny. I, I think back to 2003 when Michael Restovich, and granted the Metrodome uh, clubhouse was way too small to have all those guys in there, but a little bigger clubhouse that target field. But the experience they got and then the confidence that brought them into spring training was really key, I think, for a lot of those guys. Yeah, players will tell you, the younger players, that it's invaluable time for them when they are invited to spring training because they get a sense for what it's like uh, in the in the big leagues. But this is a little bit different animal, and it's and it's thankfully going to be a year where the Twins are going to be contending, and these players are going to be promoted and expected to contribute to a division championship. This is not something where you know you the guys are going to be wide eyed and they're going to be looking around and all that. You know, we hear a lot about Bruce Dar Gratterall, who may be you know called up uh, here soon. Uh, well, he's never been in the big leagues before, and the first time he takes the mound. Uh, I don't know what the score will be, but he's going to be throwing pitches in a pennant race, and he's hard, had hardly any time at all at Triple A. So uh, there are going to be a lot of interesting individual stories as we work through the end of the 2019 season. Yeah, and you know what? what can, sometimes what can happen with some of these young guys too, as you know, it makes a tough decision for Rocco Baldelli and Derek and Thad to decide who's going to be on that playoff roster if a guy's really smoking hot in September. Yeah, you have to allow for the possibility that somebody who's not here might be there in the opening round of the playoffs if the Twins um, are good enough to make it. You know, it happens from time to time. There are really some broken-hearted players who've been with the team for all or most of the year, and then come the playoff roster, they're not they're not on the roster, and it's a really t- difficult thing for these players to endure to you know be with the team, feel like you're a part of it. And now the game changes, and you're in the playoffs, and now you as a player uh, aren't uh, you know a part of the most exciting part of the season. Uh, it's a tough decision uh, to be made by the front office, but it's always tougher, of course, for the player who gets uh, left off the playoff roster. No question. Well, I guess I the thing is, I hope that uh, Thad Levine and Derek Feldy have to make that decision because <laughs> that means the Twins are going to the postseason. Yeah, let's let's hope it gets to that. It's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be nerve wracking. And I and I can feel the the tension that fans are experiencing when you get into the late innings of a a close ball game. And the only thing I can tell you, having gone through it uh, countless times, it's only going to get depending on how you look at it. It's either going to get better or worse here in the final weeks. It's going to be more. Uh, there's going to be more anxiety, more tension, and and let's just enjoy the heck out of it because we we've, we've been without this for far too long, and now we've we've got pennant race baseball again, and it should be a lot of fun. No question. Can't wait for tonight. 6.30 is the pregame show here on KFG on the radio side. I know Fox Sports Net North will be about the same. Dick, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again next Tuesday. You got it. Dick Bramer with us. The Twins Wrap brought to you by Jefferson Lines. Again, the pregame show coming up. Twins Baseball here on the Mighty 790 KFGO. Derek Hansen with you. This has been Couch Potato Radio.